During the Middle Paleolithic and the early phases of the Upper Paleolithic, archaic humans and their modern counterparts engaged in interbreeding. This genetic mingling involved Neanderthals, Denisovans, and possibly other yet-to-be-identified ancient human forms unfolding through several distinct episodes. In the regions of Europe, Asia, and North Africa, multiple instances of genetic exchange occurred between Neanderthals, Denisovans, and early modern humans. These episodes of genetic integration or introgression into the modern human gene pool are thought to have occurred approximately 47,000 to 65,000 years ago with Neanderthals and around 44,000 to 54,000 years ago with Denisovans. The genetic legacy of Neanderthals is evident in the DNA of contemporary human populations worldwide, with the proportion of Neanderthal DNA varying by geographical area. Individuals from outside sub-Saharan Africa possess about 1% to 4% Neanderthal DNA in their genomes, though this figure can fluctuate, and recent studies suggest that people within Africa may carry none or up to 0.3%. The presence of Neanderthal DNA is most pronounced in East Asians, somewhat less so in Europeans and least in Southeast Asians. Some studies indicate that Melanesians and Polynesians have even lower levels of Neanderthal DNA than Europeans and East Asians, although other research points to Melanesians and Native Americans having more Neanderthal ancestry than Europeans, but not more than East Asians. Denisovan ancestry is notably missing from modern populations in Africa, Western Asia, and Europe, with the most significant Denisovan genetic contributions observed in Oceania and some Southeast Asian groups. Modern Melanesians, for example, have around 4% to 6% of their genome stemming from Denisovans, with the most substantial proportions found in the Negrito groups of the Philippines. While some Southeast Asian Negrito populations exhibit Denisovan ancestry, Others, like the Andamanese, show none. Additionally, faint traces of Denisovan ancestry have been detected in mainland Asia, with South Asian populations displaying a higher degree of Denisovan heritage compared to other mainland groups. In Africa, genetic evidence suggests multiple admixture events with archaic humans, though the identities of these ancient African hominins remain a mystery. A study published in 2016 in the journal Evolutionary Biology posited that the interbreeding and assimilation of DNA from different human lineages played a crucial role in enabling modern humans to adapt and thrive in a variety of new environments. This hybrid vigor is seen as a key factor in the development of modern human diversity. By the end of 2023, research findings highlighted that genes inherited from Neanderthals and Denisovans are thought to have a significant impact on the daily life and routines of a present-day humans. On May 7, 2010, the publication of a draft Neanderthal genome, sequenced from three Neanderthals from Vindia Cave, disclosed that Neanderthals were genetically closer to Eurasian groups, such as the French, Han Chinese, and Papua New Guineans, than to sub-Saharan African groups like the Yoruba and San. The researchers suggested that this genetic overlap is most likely due to gene flow from Neanderthals into modern humans, estimating Eurasian genomes to contain 1% to 4% Neanderthal-derived DNA. Subsequent studies refined these estimates. A 2013 study narrowed it down to 1.5% to 2.1% for non-Africans, while Loos and France in 2014 proposed a higher range of 3.4 to 7.3% in Eurasia. A study in 2020 revealed that African populations, specifically those within the 1000 Genomes Project, also possess Neanderthal DNA, contributing to about 0.3% or 17 megabases of their genome. This admixture is believed to stem from the back-migration of modern humans with Neanderthal ancestry who had split from ancestors of Europeans after the divergence between East Asians and Europeans around 20,000 years ago. However, geneticist David Reich expressed skepticism about the extent of this backflow to Africa, considering the Neanderthal signal in Africans as really weak. Comparative studies have consistently shown higher levels of Neanderthal admixture in East Asians than Europeans, initially thought to be about 20% more. This disparity could be due to additional admixture events in the ancestors of East Asians 
Post-European East Asian split, dilution of Neanderthal DNA in Europeans from later migrations, or less effective removal of Neanderthal alleles in East Asians due to smaller ancestral population sizes. However, further simulations suggested that reduced purifying selection alone could not explain the higher Neanderthal proportion in East Asians, implying more complex scenarios including additional admixture events. Scientists later adjusted the additional Neanderthal ancestry in East Asians to 8% over Europeans, a correction from the earlier 20% estimate. This revision accounted for previously overlooked Neanderthal ancestry in Africans, which had been used as reference samples, thereby underestimating Neanderthal admixture in non-Africans and particularly in Europeans. The revised understanding suggests a single Neanderthal admixture event after the migration out of Africa as the simplest explanation for the observed enrichment in East Asians, while also acknowledging the potential for dilution effects. The proportion of Neanderthal sequence unique to each population showed that 7.2% of the European sequence and 2% of the East Asian sequence are shared exclusively with Africans. Genetic research indicates a nuanced pattern of Neanderthal ancestry across human populations, distinguishing sub-Saharan Africans from both North Africans and other global populations rather than simply differentiating between Africans and non-Africans. North African populations, surprisingly, share as much or even more Neanderthal-derived alleles with Neanderthals as non-African groups do, setting sub-Saharan Africans apart as the primary modern human demographic without significant Neanderthal admixture. The extent of Neanderthal genetic markers in North African groups varies with their specific ancestral backgrounds, including indigenous North African, European, Near Eastern, and sub-Saharan heritage. Statistical analyses, particularly the F4 ancestry ratio, highlight that Neanderthal admixture levels are notably high in North African communities with a predominant indigenous North African heritage like the Tunisian Berbers, matching or exceeding those found in Eurasian populations. Scientists suggest that the detectable Neanderthal genetic presence in Africa stems not from recent intermingling with Near Eastern or European populations, but is more likely tied to populations with deep-rooted pre-Neolithic North African lineage. Furthermore, even among East African populations such as the Maasai, low but discernible levels of Neanderthal admixture have been recorded. Analysis reveals that the Maasai's genetic composition includes approximately 30% non-African ancestry from post-Neanderthal human gene flow, dating back to roughly 100 generations ago, underscoring the complex mosaic of human ancestry shaped by millennia of migration and interaction. Current research reveals no trace of Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA in contemporary humans. This absence suggests that Neanderthal and modern human interbreeding primarily involved Neanderthal males and modern human females. Various theories propose why Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA is missing. It could have carried harmful mutations leading to the demise of its carriers. Offspring with Neanderthal mothers might have stayed within Neanderthal communities and thus perished with them. Or matings between female Neanderthals and male modern humans may not have produced fertile offspring. However, this presumed reproductive incompatibility is challenged by evidence indicating Neanderthal's Y chromosome was replaced by that of an extinct modern human lineage, which had mixed into Neanderthals between 100,000 and 370,000 years ago. This suggests the possibility of Neanderthals acquiring modern human Y chromosomes and mitochondrial DNA due to gene flow, especially considering Neanderthals' greater genetic burden compared to modern humans. According to a model by Neves and Serva, 2012, the admixture of Neanderthal DNA into modern humans could result from infrequent interbreeding, possibly as rare as one pair every 77 generations. This model, aligning with the lack of Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA in modern humans, suggests a mere 7% chance of Neanderthal origin for both mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosome in modern humans. In Eurasia, modern humans have benefited from genes inherited from archaic humans, which adapted them to local environments and provided new genetic variations. These genes, acquired from Neanderthals, influence various biological aspects, including keratin structure, sugar metabolism, and brain function, 
along with traits like skin pigmentation and immune system diversity, indicating strong selective advantages. European studies of the Altai Neanderthal genome have linked Neanderthal admixture to significant changes in skull and brain structure, implying alterations in neurological function. Notably, Neanderthal DNA is associated with expanded skull regions, deeper sulci, increased cortical complexity, and variations in brain matter volume, suggesting complex effects on modern human brain morphology. In Papuans, brain-expressed genes show the highest frequency of Neanderthal variants, while Denisovan DNA prevalently affects genes expressed in bones and other tissues. A specific Neanderthal-derived SNP is linked to increased blood clotting, a trait that, despite potential risks, may have conferred a slight reproductive advantage in childbirth. By the end of 2023, studies highlighted the impact of Neanderthal and Denisovan genes on the daily behaviors of modern humans, further illustrating the deep genetic legacies of these ancient hominines within contemporary human populations. Discussion of interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans has been a topic of scholarly interest since Neanderthal fossils were first discovered in the 19th century. Initially, thinkers like Thomas Huxley speculated that modern Europeans might show traces of Neanderthal lineage, suggesting that Neanderthal features indicated a primitive stage in human evolution expected in the lowest races worldwide and in the early stages of all races. For a long time, up until the 1950s, the prevailing academic consensus was that Neanderthals did not contribute genetically to the lineage of contemporary humans. However, Hans Peter Steensby challenged this notion as early as 1907, asserting in his work on race studies in Denmark that all humans are of mixed origin. Steensby opposed the view of Neanderthals as ape-like or inferior, pointing to cranial characteristics among Danes, Frisians, and the Dutch as evidence of Neanderthal heritage, suggesting that something was inherited from Neanderthals, placing them among our ancestors. In 1962, Carlton Stevens Kuhn, drawing from cranial measurements and the study of material culture, considered it plausible that Neanderthal and Upper Paleolithic humans interbred, or that early modern humans adapted Neanderthal tools for their use. By the turn of the 21st century, the majority of the scientific community had come to support the out-of-Africa theory, which posits that anatomically modern humans emerged from Africa around 50,000 years ago, displacing Neanderthals without significant genetic mixing. Despite this, some researchers, including Eric Trinkaus of Washington University in St. Louis, continued to advocate for the hybridization theory. Trinkaus identified various fossils, such as the Laga Velo child in Portugal and the Pestera Mueri skeletons in Romania, as evidence of populations resulting from Neanderthal modern human interbreeding. Research indicates that Melanesian populations, such as those from Papua New Guinea and Bougainville Island, have a higher genetic affinity to Denisovans compared to other groups derived from Eurasians and Africans. It's estimated that between 4% and 6% of Melanesian DNA originates from Denisovans, a contribution not observed in either Eurasians or Africans. This suggests specific interactions between the early ancestors of Melanesians and Denisovans, distinct from the interactions in regions like southern Siberia, where Denisovan fossils have been found. Aboriginal Australians, too, demonstrate a closer genetic link to Denisovans than do Eurasian and African groups, supporting theories of Denisovan-Melanesian admixture. Further studies affirm that Oceanian populations exhibit the most significant Denisovan admixture, followed by various Southeast Asian groups, while East Asian populations show no Denisovan genetic material. The presence of Denisovan genes in Eastern Southeast Asian and Oceanian populations, including Aboriginal Australians, Polynesians, and certain Indonesian and Philippine groups, but not in Western or Continental Southeast Asian populations, suggests the Denisovan admixture occurred within Southeast Asia. This distribution pattern supports the theory that early modern humans and Denisovans interbred east of the Wallace Line, which delineates a biogeographical division in Southeast Asia. Skogland and Jacobson, 2011, also found that Oceanians and some Southeast Asian populations exhibit higher levels of Denisovan admixture, 
compared to other global populations, with minimal traces in East Asians and none in Native Americans. Conversely, a study in 2013 reported a minor, approximately 0.2% Denisovan contribution in mainland Asian and Native American groups, significantly less than in Oceanian populations. The dynamics of this gene flow remain unclear, highlighting the complex patterns of ancient human interbreeding and migration. The genetic legacy of Denisovan admixture among modern human populations reveals a complex prehistoric narrative of migration and interaction. Research suggests that the Denisovan gene flow occurred among the common ancestors of Aboriginal Filipinos, Aboriginal Australians and New Guineans. The similar levels of Denisovan admixture in New Guineans and Australians imply that this interbreeding happened before their ancestors settled in Sahul, the combined Pleistocene landmass of New Guinea and Australia, dating back at least 44,000 years. A model proposed by Reich, 2011, envisages an early migration of modern humans eastward. Among these were ancestors common to Filipinos, New Guineans, and Australians who encountered Denisovans, leading to admixture. Subsequently, the lineages diverged, with the Philippine ancestors separating early on and the New Guinean and Australian ancestors interbreeding both among themselves and with parts of their group that had not mixed with Denisovans. Further interbreeding in the Philippines involved later migrants, distinct from those who would become East Asians. Scientists uncovered evidence of at least two Denisovan admixture events, indicating interactions with distinct Denisovan populations by different human groups. East Asians show traces of admixture from two Denisovan groups, whereas South Asians and Oceanians have DNA from one Denisovan population. Scientists pinpointed the Denisovan admixture timeline to 44,000 to 54,000 years ago, highlighting the significant presence of Denisovan DNA in Oceanian populations over others. Intriguingly, South Asian populations show notable Denisovan admixture levels, though less than those observed in Oceanians, suggesting either a single introgression event with varying degrees of dilution or multiple Denisovan introgression events. A 2021 study on Philippine ethnic groups identified a unique Denisovan admixture event in Philippine Negritos, particularly in the Itamagbukon, who have the world's highest recorded levels of Denisovan ancestry. This suggests the presence of distinct Denisovan populations in the Philippines that interbred with modern humans upon their arrival. While Eurasians possess some archaic derived genetic material overlapping with Denisovans, this is attributed to their shared ancestry with Neanderthals who significantly contributed to the Eurasian gene pool rather than direct Denisovan-Eurasian interbreeding. This genetic tapestry underscores the diverse interactions and migrations of ancient human populations, revealing a complex web of ancestry that shapes the genetic landscape of modern humans. The skeletal remains of an early modern human from Tianyuan Cave near Jukudian, China, dating back to 40,000 years ago, reveal Neanderthal ancestry within the range typical for contemporary Eurasian populations, yet show no Denisovan genetic markers. This individual is considered a distant relative of many Asian and Native American populations emerging after Asians and Europeans had diverged. The absence of Denisovan DNA in the Tianyuan specimen suggests that Denisovan genetic influence was minimal or absent in mainland populations. Research into the human immune system's HLA alleles has indicated that the HLA-B73 allele found in modern humans in Western Asia likely introgressed from Denisovans, despite HLA-B73's absence in the Denisovan genome available for study. This conclusion is based on HLA-B73's close association with the Denisovan-derived HLA-C15-5 allele and its distinct evolutionary path from other HLA alleles. Phylogenetic analysis further supports the notion that HLA-B73 is ancestral. Denisovan HLA alleles, including two HLA-A and two HLA-C allotypes, match common alleles in modern humans, suggesting a Denisovan origin due to the improbability of such alleles remaining unchanged independently in both populations over millennia, given the high mutation rate of HLA alleles. 
the Tibetan population has inherited advantageous gene variants from Denisovans, crucial for adapting to high altitudes. These variants, found in the EGLN1 and EPAS1 genes, are linked to hemoglobin concentration and the body's response to hypoxia. While the ancestral EPAS1 variant increases hemoglobin levels to counteract low oxygen availability at high altitudes, leading to the maladaptation of increased blood viscosity, the Denisovan-derived EPAS1 variant moderates this hemoglobin level increase, facilitating better adaptation to high altitudes. This Denisovan-derived variant is prevalent among Tibetans and was subject to positive selection in their ancestors following the settlement of the Tibetan Plateau. Ancient DNA analysis from various African regions has shed light on the complex ancestry of present-day African populations, revealing contributions from an archaic hominin lineage not shared with pre-agricultural Eastern African hunter-gatherers, Southern African hunter-gatherers, or their genetic intermediates. Specifically, DNA data from an approximately 4,500-year-old individual from the Ethiopian highlands and other samples ranging from 2,300 to 1,300 years ago in Southern Africa and from 8,100 to 400 years ago in Eastern and South Central Africa indicate that West African populations such as the Yoruba from coastal Nigeria and Mendi from Sierra Leone, possess unique alleles. These alleles are best explained by admixture from an archaic source distinct from known ancient populations, suggesting this admixture occurred long before the spread of agriculture and even before the Holocene epoch, which started around 11,600 years ago. This unidentified archaic lineage is believed to have diverged from the ancestors of the San people, one of the world's oldest populations around 200 to 300,000 years ago. This discovery supports the hypothesis that there was an archaic lineage in the ancestry of modern Africans that predates not only the San, Pygmies, and East African hunter-gatherers, but also Eurasian populations. Further studies, including the analysis of DNA from fossils found at Shomlaka in Cameroon, dating from 8,000 to 3,000 years ago, showed these individuals mostly descended from Central African hunter-gatherers, ancestors of pygmies, and did not carry the archaic DNA observed in the Yoruba and Mende populations. This finding was echoed by scientists in 2020 who analyzed DNA from additional Eastern and South Central African fossils and found no evidence of the archaic DNA present in West Africans. A 2020 study revealed that 2% to 19% of the DNA in four West African populations could be attributed to an unknown archaic hominin which diverged from the common ancestor of humans and Neanderthals between 360,000 and 102 million years ago. Unlike previous findings that focused solely on African populations, this study also noted that the archaic admixture might be present in Eurasians, non-Africans, suggesting the admixture events occurred before the out-of-Africa migration and the African-Eurasian split, affecting the common ancestors of both groups. Additionally, recent research has uncovered substantial amounts of previously undescribed human genetic variation, identifying ancestral genetic elements in Africans that predate modern humans and were lost in most non-African populations. The exploration of hominins in Eurasia, tracing back at least two million years, unveils a complex narrative of migration, adaptation, and interbreeding. Genetic evidence highlights that as Neanderthals and Denisovans began their expansion into Eurasia, they encountered and interbred with descendants of archaic hominin groups already present on the continent. This ancient genetic admixture contributed to the genomes of both Neanderthals and Denisovans, and subsequently, through further interbreeding events, to the genetic makeup of modern humans. Research has identified two significant instances of genetic admixture involving superarchaics, indicating that during the late Middle Pleistocene, Eurasia was home to at least two distinct populations of ancient hominins. One admixture event occurred shortly after the common ancestors of Neanderthals and Denisovans, referred to as Neandersovans, began their migration into Eurasia. They encountered a super-archaic hominin lineage that had diverged from the main line of African homo species at least two million years prior. 
a later event of genetic admixture was discovered to have occurred approximately 350,000 years ago, involving the Denisovan lineage and an erectus-like group. Given the separation of these populations by about 2 million years and their interbreeding occurring 350,000 years ago, this interaction represents one of the most distant relationships between interbreeding hominin populations known to science. This extensive timeline and the profound genetic exchanges it entailed underscore the intricate web of human evolution, revealing a far more complex history of hominin interaction and migration than previously understood. Thus, the journey to know more using science as a tool continues. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.